this lecture we will continue with community based natural resource management and in this part 2 of cbn animal lecture we will be discussing largely about watershed management watershed management is a very effective and very important way of managing natural resources and also regulating the all other aspects of community development of an area now what is watershed it's an area or land which is surrounded by ridge lines and it has kind of a catchments which drains into a common outlet and if you see that it looks like a leaf and suppose there is a, a river or major water which is coming from one entry point and this is the exit point but there will be many branches of that on the basis of slope you will find that this one small rivulets or drainage line can also create small small watershed so this is an area of an watershed and within watershed you can have many different small small watershed and this classification is largely based on sizes so we have large watershed which is bigger than 50000 hectare of area then we have sub watershed which is between 10000 to 50000 hectare of area then milli watershed between 1000 and 10000 hectare of area then comes micro watershed between 100 to 1000 hectare of area and finally mini watershed which is less than 100 hectare area so these are the you know five classes of watershed which is based on the size of it now watershed classification can also be done on the basis of land use now if you see that in an area as we discussed in previous lecture that there could be various land use right now how watershed can be classified on the basis of land uses first agricultural on the basis of agricultural land uses we can have a type of classes of watershed so this kind of watershed basically will be regulated or controlled mostly by different type of hydrological processes tillage practices vegetation cover type of crops that you are growing barren land which are not having any crops into that so basically the different agricultural practices cropping practices those actually are the regulating factor of the watershed which are classified under agricultural operation then we have urban type of or urban classes of watershed so these are the watershed which are actually having lesser infiltration due to built up areas around them will have heavy runoff flood may occur also due to improper artificial uh, drainage a lesser erosion so largely this kind of watershed you will find in an urban area are mostly at the you know at the tangent point or border area of an urban and peri urban area forest land use can also have watershed there so we will we will see that those watershed are largely you know regulated by high precipitation evapotranspiration high evapotranspiration low runoff low erosion high infiltration and of course high groundwater recharge because forest will have lot of you know plant cover so that's another class of watershed in desert also we can have uh, another classes of watershed which are characterized by lesser vegetation lesser rainfall sandy soils high evaporation run of water also you know soak during the flow then negligible chance of groundwater recharge in the desert area higher erosion because of wind because the top soil in desert area because a strong wind will be taken off most of the time then comes watersheds in the coastal area what are the characteristics that you can expect it will contain urban and rural both sides it will be influenced by waves and tides local flooding seawater intrusion most of the time could happen there and cyclonic type of precipitation a very heavy rainfall 
So these are some of the characteristics of the watersheds which are located in a coastal area. Then mountainous land use system. In mountainous land use system as you can imagine that both rainfall and snowfall could take place vegetation will be you know sparse high runoff lesser infiltration runoff can take place from snow melt as well as a rainfall which could cause flood in the downstream so these are typical phenomena characteristics that you can expect in the mountainous region of watershed then comes wetland in case of wetland area we can anticipate a very minimal erosion minimal infiltration high rainfall then less erosion and largely they are rich in biodiversity evapotranspiration can also be relatively uh, dominant in this kind of watershed so on the basis of land use how many different classes of watershed we could have one agriculture two urban three forest four desert five coastal six mountain and seven wetland now watershed management as i just mentioned that uh, watershed actually it looks you know like a leaf as you see here and it will have different you know drainage line slope plays an important role in uh, watershed management so let us see that why actually we need watershed management if you look at that uh, various causes of watershed deterioration, they are actually having lot of potential to affect the livelihood and the quality of life of the people living in those watershed. And what are those? Conversion of forest land to agricultural land often creates lot of problem and pressure on causes of watershed deterioration. Because if you convert a forest land into an agricultural land use, certainly the amount of you know moisture retention in the soil and also the hydrological cycle will be completely disrupted. So definitely that is going to affect your watershed management. Improper agricultural practices sometimes creates lot of problem for watershed management. Deforestation due to increment of built up areas road widening even inside forest because you need transport communications so these also might create some kind of disturbances within an watershed over exploitation of groundwater due to urban growth huge amount of water actually being pumped out of the groundwater for for daily uses in these areas industrial extension improper and unscientific mining is another very major issue which actually creates a lot of problem for watershed management. Now this kind of problem definitely will affect also the watershed area. Now how they actually impact you know the watershed area on what are the effect of this watershed deterioration. Because of this watershed deterioration on these causes high erosion will take place and we are going to lose the very valuable topsoil seawater intrusion can also takes place due to you know lowering of groundwater table in the coastal areas improper urban growth with inadequate drainage system can cause you know more frequent flood situation flash flood also sometime could happen in the urban areas over exploitation of groundwater could cause water crisis and aquifer destruction global hydrological cycle will be disturbed and it could cause frequent flood and droughts. We could also see that agricultural production may be hampered, biomass could be reduced, biomass production, water quality and quantity also get affected. Most importantly, the biodiversity can also be degraded in some regions and some ecosystem. Overall, because of all these effects, the global socio-economic problems will occur. So, it will start with the local then it it will go to the global so you can imagine that that if a watershed is affected by some you know mismanagement of of some resources improper uh, land use changes then we could actually end up having even socio economic problems in an area and exactly that is what we 
see often happening in many parts of the world. Now, to address these issues, we need a very efficient watershed management. Now, what are the watershed management objectives? Why do we need watershed management? First, soil and water conservation by regulating, controlling runoff erosion. Because runoff and erosion are the two of the major problems that, that actually deteriorate in watershed area. Next, useful utilization and management of runoff water. The huge amount of water which is actually flowing out of the watershed need to be also managed properly. Conservation and improvement of the land water, that watershed for more efficient production that we can use it. Protection and enhancement of water resources that originates in the watershed itself. Rehabilitation of the deteriorating land, how could you do that? One of the easiest way to do it, plantation. Plantation of some trees which are useful and also suitable for any particular ecosystem. That also need to be kept in mind. Flood control and management is very, very important. Infiltration, increasing rainwater infiltration in the area so that groundwater also can recharge. Improvement and increment of production of different timbers in the forest area medicinal plant, wildlife resources and minimize the hazard and or to the natural resources by various means which we discussed in the earlier lectures. So, these are the you know uh, various objectives under watershed management. Now, any kind of management when it has to take place, it should follow certain principle. Watershed is no different. So, watershed management has certain principles. Let us see what are those. Number one, utilization of land in accordance with its capacity. Very important. Means we should utilize a particular piece of land on the basis of its capacity, say fertility, productivity. If suppose its particular piece of land has certain amount of fertility through different kind of soil analysis, we should know that and accordingly we should grow the crop. If you grow some crop which is which demands intensive amount of you know nutrients from the soil, then what happens is basically a situation like this. Suppose this is your bank account, right? And every month your salary comes into in this account and you take it out. So, this we can call credit and this we can call debit. Now, suppose in one month for some reason your salary does not come. So, that means there is no credit in your account, but you are continuously debiting it. What will happen? One point of time your this account will be completely empty. So, you cannot further extract any money from here, right? Because there is no credit into this account. Exactly if you imagine this bank as soil and if we do not put any kind of inputs, we, if we do not manage the soil properly to enhance its nutrient which is equivalent to cash for us. So, if we grow plant that means you extract nutrients from the soil, after a certain point soil will lose all the nutrients, its productivity and fertility. So, that is what we need to actually understand the capacity and accordingly we should choose the crop or plant. Second, adequate vegetative cover for maintaining the soil because vegetative cover helps to reduce erosion, runoff. So, that means the nutrient in the soil will remain where it should be. Drainage of excess water with safe and non-erosive velocity means slowly and store the drain water for future uses. In some places in India, we get more than the water that actually required there because of you know rain, heavy rain. So, that extra amount of water which is flowing through the you know watershed, it should be stored somewhere. So, that at least when there is no rain, that water can be utilized for another crop. Conserve maximum rainwater at the place where it occurs, right there in situ and that particular place where the rainfall is coming try to conserve the moisture water in that particular area. Increase groundwater recharge, no alternative for sustainable water management. Overall sustainable management of the 
resources available resources in the watershed so these are the basic principle that we should follow for better watershed management mm -hmm.